I will present to you the standardizing workflow that we made with Argo workflow, which is an open source solution. And uh, when Tao will uh, show you the visual QA for the standardized imagery, which uh, is the output of the workflow, and uh, how base maps um, serves the aerial imagery. So a bit of, of background now. Um, we have a process of publishing the aerial imagery, uh, which is done by a uh, data analyst uh, team in, um, in the topo location um, information at Linz. And um, this process has several steps. I don't know if you can really uh, clearly read the steps, but uh, it's not very important. Uh, what is important is to note that there are a lot of manual steps there, and uh, some of the manual steps require some process on uh, laptops or local machines, and even some of them are um, sometimes not doable with a local machine because of the amount of data that we have now. And um, so we needed to transform this process to be able to use the power of the cloud and um, with um, changing um, the way we receive the data. We used to receive the data on hard drives and um, now that we have a high increase of the, of the amount of data, it's really hard to maintain th this current process. So moving this process uh, from uh, the old process to uh, processing the data on the cloud uh, offers a lot of advantages. Uh, it's scalable, so we do not use uh, hard drives anymore. We have a storage on the cloud, which is uh, scalable. We, <coughs> we can also manage costs um, and permissions. We, um, we can use virtual machines on the cloud instead of using the local machines. And we, so we don't have any CPU or memory limitation because we can, um, we can create as many virtual machines that we want with the uh, configuration that we want. It's more resilient. Uh, there is almost no uh, way to lose any files on the cloud and um, or corrupt uh, data that can really ca that can happen really often with uh, hard drives and um, it's it um, it's easy to observe the the process on the cloud because we can have some uh, logging and alerts uh, through some miss um, some application like slack or like instant messaging and uh, also having a logging um, system like Elasticsearch. I don't know if you heard about it. But um, yeah, it's easier to observe the process. It's also shareable. Um, we can uh, share our process to uh, people um, from, a plat from an online platform. So everyone can Everyone who has access to this platform can see all the workflows that has been run and see the results. Um, so it, it's good now that some people are working uh, from home or in other countries. Um, and it's also consistent because, consistent because before we were um, executing a process on a laptop and uh, each laptop might or might not have the same version of the software which executes the processes. Uh, but using a common process on the cloud, um, we get rid of this kind of issue with uh, managing versions. Now I will talk to you about um, the cloud solution and how um, we implemented this solution on Argo workflows. Um, <coughs> so this, this schema is about how we um, implemented the new solution on the cloud. Um, so before we had consuls or flying companies sending us the imagery, the aerial imagery on hard drives and we received it, them at the office. And now instead of doing that, they can upload directly the images on the cloud. We provide them a solution to do that. Uh, it can be a FTP access or, um, or a direct access to the um, Amazon infrastructure. 
and from this uh, cloud storage where the files are um, are put, we can directly access to them from our uh, cloud process. So you can see uh, at the middle of the cloud um, these virtual machines that will run the process uh, directly from the cloud storage. So there is no interaction with uh, local machine anymore or hard drives. And uh, once the process um, the processes are, are finished, the images will be uploaded to another um, storage on the cloud and we will save the imagery directly from the cloud. So no interaction with uh, any machines or hard drives anymore. How did we prepare the transition from the old process to the new process? Um, we, we had a phase of uploading the existing imagery that we had on hard drives uh, at the office, um, upload them to the cloud to be able to um, store them in a safe place, but also using our cloud, so cloud solution to, to, um, yeah, to use the image. And um, we had, as a developers, um, we had to understand the current process of uh, what the data analyst did. And, um, and after understanding this process, we uh, did some research about uh, ETL solutions, which is uh, extract, transform, and load solution. So there are several um, solutions that we explored, like uh, Apache Airflow or Daxter or whatever. And um, we, we had a, a demo from an Australian company, uh, Digital Earth Africa, which uh, they, they show us the Argo workflow solution. And uh, after trying it, we, we were convinced to use it. So that was um, yeah, the solution we chose. And um, we also had to make some deci decision about the file format. Um, like uh, COG, which is a cloud-optimized uh, GeoTIFF, and uh, WebP or Stack. Um, if we have, if you have any question about uh, that, we can talk talk about it later. So, what what is Argo Workflows? Argo Workflows is a solution that orchest that can orchestrate jobs or tasks, and it's um, it's based on Kubernetes. Kubernetes is another solution that um, that allows you to run containers, to deploy uh, containers in parallel or in a sequential way and uh, through Docker or other container um, solution. And uh, to, to make Argo workflows working, we had to create some workflow templates. So workflow template is, um, is a file where you describe all the tasks you, you want to run in a sequence or in parallel and you, each of these tasks will execute a program or a process, which can, can be a GDAL command or a Python script. And um, to, to be able to do that, you have to put your, your, script, your script or your, um, yeah, your command on a container, on a Docker container. So we, we had a, a bit of work of transposing the existing scripts that people did run on their local machine to uh, a Docker container and, um, and being able to run in um, a large uh, amount of data. So this is a, a very simple version of our standardizing imagery workflow. Uh, I removed a lot of tasks to make it um, like shorter to explain and e easier to read. Um, so on, on the left, um, you can see uh, what looks like a, a workflow in Argo workflow. So this is a description of the workflow. And uh, I did put only two tasks on this one. Uh, you can see one task is uh, called AWS list, AWS for Amazon Web Service. And it's a task that will list the files uh, located on a, on a cloud uh, storage. <coughs> and um, this task will list um, the files that are located with some filters, like if we want to get only the TIFF files uh, with a specific name or whatever, and we'll pass this um, list of files to the next task, task which is standardized validate workflow uh, task, sorry. 
and um, this task for each group of file will uh, uh, create an instance of um, of a Docker container, um, and we can deploy some container in parallel, so it makes the process faster because uh, instead of having one local machine uh, running several files and once the process is done, you have to run it again on another batch of files, you can run them in parallel. And um, the output will be um, some standardized uh, image imagery with some metadata. Uh, I, listed, um, I listed some of the main uh, tasks that we, we are doing in the standardized validate workflow. Uh, which is uh, some GDAL command to uh, transform the imagery, renaming some files, and um, doing a non-visual QA with uh, GDAL again, and created some metadata with uh, stack, and stores, finally stores the files in another location. So you can have um, all our code base is, uh, op um, is public on, uh, on GitHub, so you can have a, a look if you go to those links. Um, I will now do a quick uh, demo. Um, those are some backup slides. But um, this is what Argo workflows uh, look, looks like. And uh, this is a page where you can see all the workflows that uh, has been run. And to submit a workflow, um, here you have a list of workflow templates, and um, I will just show you how you submit a workflow, uh, just to um, to show you that uh, all the manual tasks that you could see on the first uh, control, uh, I don't know if you remember the first uh, schema with with all the manual steps that has been has to be done. Um, now you have to uh, enter some parameters and do a, just a simple click, and you run um, a lot of process. Um, together. So <coughs> here, here there are some parameters where you want to uh, get the files from, which kind of files you want, and, uh, and uh, the compression um, format you want to use, and you click on submit and it will run, um, it will run a, a new workflow here. Um, but those data are not really interesting. Uh, I've asked someone from Wellington to run a workflow this morning, so s you can see 44 minutes ago, and uh, the workflow finished 36 minutes ago. Um, this person did run it on, um, I think we can see here, um, which, on some um, bluff urban imagery. And as you can see here, um, there are some, um, when, when I show you before the standardized validate uh, task, you can see that um, they are run in parallel. And um, the output of, of this workflow is to serve, is to uh, put the imagery inside base maps for a visual QA that uh, Wen Tao will show you later and I, I just show you the output quickly if I copy this link oh yeah it's here when Tao will we'll go uh, further on this but uh, yeah the imagery is on base maps now um, so thanks Paul for going through the uh, Argo workflow and uh, where is the slides? Here. Yeah. Um, my name is Wen Tong. I'm currently working at the Lean Space Map team as a developer. Um, next, I'm going to talking about some extensions we have added to the workflow to enable the visual QA process by using the Lean Space Map service. So Lean Space Map service is um, uh, open source software to provide a base map uh, on the cloud. Um, it makes Lean the uh, source data for public to free to use. And since t uh, two years ago, we launched the aerial base map. And uh, last year, we launched the vector topographic base map. Um, 
for the past two years, we have hundreds of developer keys have been allocated and uh, billions of requesting requesting on these tiles for the service, which is quite always quite stable and uh, uh, available online. And so the goal is to using the Lean Space Map service to load and serve the standardized output imagery and using the bitmap debug page for uh, doing the visual QA. There are a few challenges to achieve this. The first one is all the output imagery tip files are saved in a different AWS account with a different structure. So we have to create, a, uh, we also need some configurations like uh, uh, imagery metadata and the indexes that the bitmap system required. That's all the missing part for the bitmap system. So we have to create a temporary configuration file uh, alongside these tip files and upgrade the base map to be able to load the config as a standalone system. We also need to handle the permission changes once we load loading the config files from different AWS accounts. Here's the same screenshot as the workflow previously. So I just quick talk about the last task, create config is the one for we doing the visual QA. And this is the last step after we finishing all the imagery standalized and uh, I'll put a link that Paul previously logged into that is the uh, QA page which load this config in and pointing all these images for the QA process. I was previous prepare a video demo but now we're having some new imagery this morning we can do a live one maybe. So that's the bitmap QA page we are using for uh, visual QA process. And uh, on the top right, there are some functions uh, uh, like uh, we're using to support QA, like the purple background, which is using to add some purples on the background for us to identify any white spaces and uh, white lines between the tip files. And also this source is uh, all the source tip files we're using to creating the map. And if we want to find anyone, just click it and it will copy the S3 location for the tile and easier for us to find them. And there's a slider for us to use to comparing map. That's <coughs> initially requested by the environment of Canterbury, which is recording ECAN. And um, uh, we find this feature is very useful after we adding the map. When we moving the sliders, we can see the the existing map will show you about the new map. Then we can do a comparison between two maps and see the alignment between them. Once we add in the new map, it will be showing about the existing one. And so that's something we use for comparing them and uh, doing the QA process. We also having the WMTS link on the top right to put a new map into the QGIS for further testing and investigations. So just skip the video demo now and um, uh, next I'm going to talking about the Lens Aerial Base Map and uh, how it works. I will start with a, a quick overview of the Aerial Base Map architecture and uh, then talking about the difference and the changes we made when we trying to loading the Argo workflow output into the base map. After that, I will talking about the base map configurations repository that we are using to managing the existing map. Uh, the last one is the screenshot validation tool we are running inside the both the base map and the base map config repository as a additional end-to-end -end testing and validation tool. Oh, I, I make it quick. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, uh, uh, here is very simple architecture of the base map area map. So on the left side, you can see we're using the open source map library for the, all the map rendering on the bitmap front end. And also we provide support for the QGS. And then we're using the AWS cloud front caching all the tiles to improve the performance. So on the server, we're using the Lambda for all the bitmap server. So there are three main PIs related to the uh, bitmap aerial map. So X, Y, Z is so for comparing and uh, composing the tiles and to the imagery and attribution is the front end attribution rendering. And the last one is the, for the QGIS support. Uh, we're using AWS S3 to save all the imagery and uh, DynamoDB for the configurations like uh, imagery metadata and uh, indexes that 
using for the system. So when, try, when we're trying to load the Argo workflow outside the base map, we create a temporary config JSON file inside a different uh, bucket and using a new config query parameter to load this config file into the Lambda, then the Lambda will be able to run to as a standalone system without accessing the existing DynamoDB. So we're also handling the permission changes once we're giving a different con config between the different AWS accounts. Uh, this is a, a, a base map config repository we are using to managing all the configurations in the DynamoDB. So on, on the left, uh, bottom left, these are the configs we're managing and the tile size is mainly about the uh, image reference. Like on the right side, that's the aerial imagery config. It's partly of the aerial one. You can see there's a uh, lot of S3 links to referencing the imagery we processed into the base map. We're also managing the titles, name, and uh, zoom levels for each one. And the other ones like fonts, sprites, and uh, styles are the uh, base map, vector map configurations. For example, we, once we make a new, trying to make a new imagery and importing to the base map aerial map, the import process will creating this pull request automatically and adding all the QA links in the pull request for both the individual imagery and the whole map changes. Once we add, adding a new map in the existing map, we can QA both sides. Uh, all the CI/CD process for the GitHub uh, will taking care of updating and checking the data between the GitHub and the DynamoDB make them consistent. And the last one is the screenshot validation tool we added to the base map and the base map config uh, CRCD process. It is like uh, mainly using for validating the changes we made to config and uh, all the code base. And it start a local server with the change to config or code and then doing screenshots to compare the print uh, production screenshots on the testing tiles and uh, alert if any changes. And so we will know the changes expected or not. For example, once we make some front-end change, we, we change the font color getting dark and bold. The screenshot tool will highlight change part for us. Then we will know that's the expected change. We can still merge the progress. And uh, there's some reference for the other public GitHub repo related to the presentation. Feel free to have a look if you're interested. Yeah. <laughs> 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 <laughs>